missing police cadet. You are seeing a surveillance video. She's a beautiful young woman. She's about to graduate to complete a degree. This is one of the last known images of Kelly Rothwell. She was very excited. She was happy. She was talking about the next steps of her life. It's only four and a half weeks, but to be honest with you, we have a lot left to do. She hasn't been spotted since. And those steps did not involve her boyfriend, David Perry. Here's some information that you may want to be aware of. She was going home to break up with Dave. Police execute search warrants on Kelly's condo. We felt that he was overbearing. He has not been named a suspect at this juncture. He's a bit possessive and controlling. The downstairs neighbor hears a series of loud thuds around the time Kelly disappears. If somebody like threw something down or jumped on the ceiling real hard. Where is Kelly Rothwell? Straight out to David Lore, crime reporter, AOLnews.com. What is the latest in the search for Kelly? Well, we've got a couple developments tonight, Nancy. Uh, we have the boyfriend, David Perry. He has voluntarily turned over his car to New York State Police. Uh, we have an individual claiming to be an attorney of Perry's who has contacted the police there and gave them a very brief uh, somewhat sketchy timeline of his activities that day but it only covers uh, about three hours or so oh and Alexis then we also have, uh, when David Lore says that uh, David Lore joining us from AOLnews.com he's their crime reporter Alexis when he says he voluntarily turned over the car come on he voluntarily turns over the car after not turning it over for days on end knowing the police wanted it. He is a former cop. He knows the deal. And also, giving this timeline, he only covered about three hours, did he not? Right, Nancy. Police tell us today that the timeline was extremely selective. It was very vague. And police say there's really nothing they can do with this timeline. It's useless to them. Now, why is the timeline useless? We don't know exactly why, we just know that it was extremely vague. They call it selective. Um, that's all they're telling us right now, Nancy. To Pat Brown, criminal profiler, isn't that the way? Haven't you seen it? I did for all the years I was prosecuting. If a defendant does give a statement, that they'll start talking, but then when it comes up to the critical moments, say of the shooting, of the kidnapping, of the dope deal, everything goes fuzzy. Then they kind of pick up after that. So the statement in itself becomes useless. Well, if the person is innocent, they're going to just give the information from, from beginning to end. They're going to open up their home, their car. They're going to say, go for it. Do Mr. Perry has left the state, so he, the police cannot see his body. He took the car away for nine days so he could do whatever he wanted to it. Now he's giving him just what he wants to give them. And you know a cop will know how to clean out a car. Let me report, he is not an official suspect tonight. To Detective Michael Bailey, joining us from Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, I understand that you have searched her condo. He sent his adult son into the condo to retrieve items. Are you ready to tell us what was in that box yet, or is it still a secret? <laughs> Nancy, it's still, uh, still under wraps at this time. Like I said, what was in this box may or may not be related. Just the fact that the, uh, uh, David Perry Sr. wanted to have that item out of there uh, may uh, have some concern for us. But like I said, this, it's too early to tell this time whether that item will be relevant or not. Well, you're right, Detective, because why couldn't he get the item himself? What was his fear of going back into the condo? And if he had any intent of going back to search for Kelly, why would he want his son removing items from the condo? Tonight, Kelly Rothwell missing. A 35-year-old police cadet had never missed a single class at the police academy, the elite St. Pete Police Academy, until now. Leaving a public supermarket with her best friend. The two had lunch at this Clearwater Chili's. She allegedly told her friend she was headed to her apartment to break up with her boyfriend. He was so confrontational that you, you wouldn't back off, you know what I mean? He kept coming at you. 